Hi, this is Ron Darling with SNY TV. Um, you know me from covering the Mets, and uh, I hope you get a chance to listen to Mets Musings with Gary Mack. I had a great time. I hope you do, too. Hi, I'm Ron Swoboda of the 69 New York Mets, and you're listening to Mets Musings with Gary Mack. Mets Musings is an unofficial, independent podcast covering New York's National League Baseball team. It is not affiliated in any way with Major League Baseball or the New York Mets. This is Len and Jeff from Baseball and Barbecue. And the one place to go for New York Mets news, past week game reviews, upcoming series previews, interviews, analysis, opinion, and, and what's, what's going, going down, down on the farm. farm. It's, it's Mets Musings with Gary Mack. So keep, keep the faith, faith stay, stay optimistic, optimistic and let's go Mets. Mets Musings with, with Gary Mack. Now it's time for some New York Mets baseball talk. Here's Gary Mack bringing you the latest news and analysis from Mets Nation and the world of baseball on another edition of Mets Musings. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Mets Musings. Yes, I'm back. These two guys forced me into it. They held me at gunpoint and told me I had to do the show. So we thought we'd do it right here on the comfort of my deck and uh, make it nice and summery for everybody. We are a few days uh, after the All-Star break and the second half, the proverbial second half of the season, is starting tonight. Mets are playing right now as we speak, I would imagine. Don't know yeah. if they're losing yet, uh, but <laughs> probably will be soon <laughs> with Vargas pitching. <laughs> Vargas is starting tonight? But yes, Vargas, Vargas is starting, starting the second half, the oh, proverbial okay. second half. So, uh, to start off, let's just uh, start with introducing my cohorts over here to tonight. Tonight, right to my left, is Jeff Cohen from Baseball and Barbecue, and to his left is my former co-host and uh, contributor to this show, Barry Newman. So, guys, welcome. Thanks for coming on tonight for a little bit of a round table. Uh, your co-host, Len, was supposed to join you, but he got tied up with other matters, so he couldn't be On here. assignment. He's on assignment. <laughs> Probably eat barbecue somewhere. Yes, and, uh, I guess so. Turn a lineup against <laughs> yes. you. By the way, go check out Baseball and Barbecue because they've had some great guests. Yeah. They had Ron Swoboda on, as did I. And they also had Todd Pratt they on their last. So go check that out at Baseball and Barbecue. That, what? Uh, uh, Weebly? Baseball and Barbecue. Dot Weebly. Com. Okay, there you go. So check it out. It's a great show. And I'm the one that had not interviewed Ron Swoboda. <laughs> but I met him. But you met little, him at Stu but, but I met him a long time ago on the Long Island Railroad. All right, so we, we had the first half, but the first half ended not on a... Well, it didn't end on a good note for the Mets, but they it, it kind of ended on a good note with the celebration of the 69 Mets, the 50th anniversary. And both you gentlemen... Barry, I thought you moved into City Field because you were there all three games. Uh, and Jeff, you were also there at two games. So uh, I wanted to get your guys' feelings on uh, the 69 weekend. And uh, I, I know there was a little bit of a misstep that the Mets made. But all in all, what, what was your impressions about everything? The naming uh, of Tom Seaver Street and uh, what they call it, Tom Seaver Tom Seaver Way. Way. And uh, the uh, the announcement of the statue for Tom Seaver. Finally. So, so let us know what your impressions were of this uh, that weekend. Well, we had a tremendous time. It really is going to be difficult for me to add anything to what's already been said. But to be there in person, seeing them at least try to recreate the uh, Canyon of Heroes celebration, right. it was really great. And then the introductions and saving Eddie Cranepool for last. That that was really a that nice was a good touch. move. Good that was move. a good move. Yeah. And I tell you I was impressed when but they introduced Buddy Harrison and after he got off the golf 
car. He actually jogged up to the podium, which was amazing to see. You know, <laughs> with all his his, uh, you know, his health problems going through, and it was right. that was great to see. He was still uh, he still got some uh, you know athleticism in. He, now I, I did watch it on television, uh, and I have to say that uh, I thought he looked very good. That considering we had seen him at Stu Leonard's. Just like Shane Stadium. Just like Shane <laughs> uh, We saw him at Stu Leonard's the, uh, oh, a month or so uh, before, or a month and a half, whatever, and he did not look good at all at that event, but he looked fairly good at this event, and uh, yeah. that was pleasing. It was, and see, uh, really, Art Shamsky really took care of him, made sure he was, uh, you know, Stable and uh, was able to you know enjoy everything. Wow, so you know, let's give a shout out to. Uh, I mean, you know, they're all great guys: Ron Spoda, Art Shamsky, Ed Cranepool, and, and Duffy Dyer was there. It was just it was a great event. And and how was the feeling in the stadium uh, as far as the people? Uh, you know, was there a lot of. Uh, older people that remembered it or was it a, a mix of everything and and uh i was impressed with the way all the players were there to watch this that was nice. because sometimes you know the younger guys don't really care about history too much of the of the uh the events and uh they were all out on the top step of the dugout and that was nice to see that was and howie rose the mc did say that the 69 Mets did change a lot of people's lives, including mine for sure. I mean, that is one of the most revered teams in the, the history of professional sports. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I, I tell you what, I was a little surprised that the stadium wasn't filled to capacity. There was a couple of sections up there that were empty, which I really, that surprised me. You know, I, I, I wonder sometimes at, at these events, though, when they have something before the game, if it's uh, not a lot of a latecomers or a lot of times it's people tailgating and, and uh, they, they lose track of time and uh, maybe some of them are passed out in the backseat of their car and <laughs> don't even make the game. But I, I think that happens a lot when they have these things, you know, or they just don't care. They well, just there was don't. like pockets of empty seats where it was like, this is a 69 Mets. They're never yeah. going to see this again. Yeah, this yeah, that's true. a shame. Now, maybe the weather had something to do with it. Was it. it was hot. It was very hot. It was hot. very hot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was a very hot day. And, and but I agree with it, Jeff. I, I didn't think of it until you mentioned it. But, yeah, there were a couple of sectors that looked pretty empty, and that kind of surprised me as well. Well, you know, but it went off pretty well. I mean, as we said, there was a small little glitch. Uh, they had a couple plays that were actually still alive, and they had them on the Memorial Tribute. Um, that was unfortunate. It was. It wasn't. Yeah, it was unfortunate. But you know, sometimes they deal with MLB, and you don't know if MLB, you know, gave them the wrong information. Nobody's really said what happened. They apologized to the to the, the, the two gentlemen uh, that it happened to, and you know, quite frankly. Their participation in the '69 Mets, they were lucky that they even got remembered in any way. Exactly right. <laughs> I never heard of those two players before. No, I heard of the one. Uh, uh, I mean, I heard of both of them, but I don't, I don't remember either one of them playing that year. But uh, the one guy, uh, Jesse uh, Jesse Hudson, played one game. One game. For the Mets. One game. Two that innings. Was, I that think. That was his right? career. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jim Goska, he played with a bunch of teams. I think he had played it, uh, 9 or 10 years or 12 years in the majors with different teams, but he was uh, at the end of his career here. Um, but uh, I, I don't remember him from that year, but, you know. Now, they also made another mistake when they showed them singing on the Ed Sullivan show. They uh, missed the top row. Uh, well... Now, those guys, none of them could sing anyway, so maybe <laughs> the guys that they, they left out, which was, let's see, it would have been Shamsky, Swoboda, Taylor, and Weiss. They didn't show them. Now, maybe those four guys were happy that they weren't showing, <laughs> at least trying to sing, but it was another mistake. If yeah. They showed 
the whole team, they should have showed the whole team. Wow. Well, you know, you not know, a biggie, but just that's a, that's to another that. thing too. You don't know what the clip that they got from uh, CBS or whoever owns the rights to that. Uh, uh, that could have been something. It could have been something with uh, you know when they showed it on the screen, it blows it up because it's old technology right. and trying True. to convert it to new. And that could have uh, did it. So we don't really know much about that. But um, all in all, I think it. I mean, it was very enjoyable to watch on television, especially Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, did they do anything the other two days? Really? Friday, no, we other were actually giveaways. I don't know how Barry feels, but on Friday night they gave away the uh, jersey. But it was they had really no players out there. I mean, I guess they had a couple guys signing autographs. But I had, I missed that, I guess. But you think one of the six nine minutes would have thrown out the first ball. They didn't have that. They really didn't make any references during the game. So I was kind of, I was kind of disappointed on that. Now again, having gone to all three games, I didn't really know what was going on on TV. Although we did tape the Saturday game because we wanted to make sure. We well, that was really the, the keystone event, right? And they had Cleon Jones in the booth, and I think he missed his calling. He should have <laughs> a late night comedy <laughs> right. show. He's the funniest man on, on earth. And I had hoped that now you guys interviewed Swoboda, and I had hoped that once and for all we would get the real story, not the Cleon Jones version, which, which may or not be, may not be, be true. Did he really hop the fence to get into the clubhouse? And I thought maybe if he had Swoboda or if somebody had Swoboda and Jones together, we might get the real story. Now, you, I'm sure, seen that clip of the final out of the 69 series a zillion times. And when they pan the out, did you see Jones go to the one knee, catch the final out, then he and A.G. make that mad dash right, to the right, right, right field. field. Yeah. You don't see Swoboda at all. No, now, no. You guys said, one of you guys, when you interviewed him, said he went, he went for the dugout. He told me that he he was just he broke for the dugout mm. and had no no idea what was happening with anybody else. He was just concentrating on getting to the dugout. Now again, not a big deal, but I remember Jones said that he, Ag, and Swoboda had a plan that they would all go through the bullpen to get to the clubhouse. Now obviously, well they call him Rocky, so <laughs> he messed up the plan if, if there even was a plan. So. I guess Cleon said he had to hop the fence and he was locked out of the bullpen. So in, until we hear differently, we'll have to take him, take his word, take his him word. for his word on everything. Take his word for it. That certainly <laughs> makes for a funny story, him, him actually doing that, if he did in fact do that. Well, now that that celebration's over, we have to face the reality of the first half of the, this, this, this disastrous Met season. Um, the record is is actually is it better or it's very it's close to last year's it's numbers better than last year not it's by much, much but it's, it's amazing than to me that that's the case because uh, I, I just think that they look so much worse this year and I, I think it's because of the way they lost several of these games oh, man. heartbreakers heartbreakers uh, uh, you know the bullpen has been a complete disaster to say the yeah. least, uh, most of the moves by Van Wagenen have, I mean, I'm trying to be kind here, but they've really been awful. I mean, none of them have really have worked, worked out. Uh, worked out. Uh, you could probably say J.D. Davis, maybe, uh, you know, even uh, you go so far as the Wilson Ramos deal, it, it's, it's awful. Right. Uh, it just didn't. It's not. You know. Okay, he's hitting two seventy. Whatever he's hit. You know, he's got some home runs, but his defense he is, can't catch the ball. Has huh? has, has really deteriorated. Uh, I mean, when Tomas Nito is looking better and better every day, and, and by the way, he's hitting about two fifty. I think two forty seven, something like that, and uh, playing decent uh, defense. It really begs the question. Um, uh, Brody Van Wagenen had a press conference today to kick off the second half uh, of the season. And, uh, you know, he, he was talking like a guy that knows he's, he's got to sell. He's still trying to convince everybody that they're in it to win uh, this year and next year. 
Um, see, I, I'm always of the opinion I don't. I don't see why you can't do both. I can't. I don't understand why you can't be sellers, but you're trying to improve your team. So why not try to improve it to the point where you may be a contender within mm -hmm. the next year or two? I mean, you don't right. always have to, uh, you know, um, uh, bring home the winner, but. You know, at least uh, be uh, of somewhat of a contender, but we'll we'll have to see what choices he makes in the next few weeks. But um, your thoughts on the first half of the season? It was uh, like you said, a disappointment. We were really excited for the season to begin, and they got up pretty good, and then they just the bullpen just imploded. Oh, they're losing bad, losing games they should win. Giving up, I'm not comfortable now. If they're going to win a game, they have to have a five or six run lead going into the ninth. I'm inning. still not comfortable. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe a five or six run lead with two outs, no one on base, and an 0-2 count with right. a number nine in. I'd still get worried. Exactly. <laughs> on the bright side, they did win twice as many games this June they did last June. <laughs> Yeah, so that's but, something to look up for, right? Know, what did they win last year? <laughs> they lost five. They won five <laughs> games last year. Now we have ten games this year. So that's an improvement. But you're, you're right. The, the, the bullpen is hideous. And the starters, I mean, we all love the Grom. Syndergaard, I mean, you think he would be better. Uh, Wheeler's been going deep into games, but I mean, deep. Deep is six innings now. That's, that's deep into games. They really got to go longer. And, I, you know, I was going to say this to later, but... There's like that 100 pitch mark. Is that, that magical line in the stand, you know, stake in the ground, that's it, 100 pitch, you're out of the game. And I don't understand that all the time. You know, when DeGrom is pitching, and he has like, say, 100 pitches in the sixth inning, are those stressful, six, uh, are those stressful pitches? Or is he pitching with guys on base every inning? Or is he pitching to set up, is he wasting 20 pitches to set up the batter? You know, that, that, that 100 pitch mark is like an albatross. That, why can't these guys go deeper into games? I, that I would save I the bullpen. It's, it's a great question. It's really a great question. I think they need to stretch these guys out. It, it's just a philosophy now that that they go, you know, Tom Seaver never pitched at 100% strength. No, he knew. He knew how to pace himself, and, and they throw 150, 160 yeah. pitches. They go nine innings. These guys, they throw as hard as they can for as long as they can, for the most part. DeGrom knows how to pitch. Right, and that's why he gets more innings than anybody else. Right, but he has, he, he can't be the artist like a receiver because he can't set up the, the batter because he's going to know he's going to be out in 100 pitches. That's true. <laughs> that's true. And the, look, I get it. There's 100 pitches, and his guy's... Uh, two guys on every inning. He's pitching under stress, and you know he hasn't got it. But if he's so nice, easy, why can't they go 120, yeah, 130? Yeah, if he's I don't get it. Through, I mean, I don't, I don't understand get it. it either. Barry? And quite often, they have, and it's the one thing, maybe the only thing I'll give Mickey some credit for, stretched out their starting pitches, probably, well not probably, almost certainly, because they have no choice with this hideous bullpen. And I think calling them hideous is being kind. The Phillies' bullpen is hideous. The Nationals' bullpen is hideous. If the Mets' bullpen was on a par with those two teams, they'd probably be right in the thick of the right. wild card. Uh, yeah, yeah, As the exactly. team as they are. As far as the starters, it may be just more hype than anything else because clearly in the two, three, and four spots, they've regressed this season. Wheeler had a killer second half last year. His ERA is in the mid-fours. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know what to make a Syndergaard, but he was 13-4 and four last year, and his ERA is in the mid to high fours as well. And Steven Matz is like that little blonde-haired girl with the curl. You know, one, you know, one inning he just, he just explodes, and, that, and that's, that's the end of him. And, it's, and uh, it seems like it's the first inning for him that he has trouble. And against, against the Phillies. Bad. And against the Phillies. And Just don't, the don't Phillies. pitch him against the Phillies. He'll be okay. Well, use this, the starter or the opener for That's uh, not a bad Stephen idea. Matz, you know? That, you know, Gary makes an excellent point. You, you want your best pitchers in at the end of the game, which are your starters. Really? Yeah. I'd like to see maybe 
Well, I was going to say Wilma Font, but he was DFA today. Yeah. Have him start one or two innings, and then you have Maxson pitch the next six innings. Because you want th- those better pitchers in at the end of the game. That's what I would like to see. But Now, you, you mentioned that they DFA'd uh, Wilma Font today. Um, I mean, chances are he'll be back in the organization. He'll be back in Syracuse. They, uh, Dilson Herrera had opted out of his contract like a few weeks ago. Right. He came crawling uh, back. And he came crawling back because he got no offers. And, and uh, by the way, had an excellent uh, all-star game, AAA all-star game. So uh, maybe that's, he's somebody we should keep an eye on that they may be able to move maybe uh, yeah. in, in a package for somebody. Uh, but Wilma Font was not lights out, but he pitched okay. And for this bullpen, that's monumental at this stage. And they let him go. I, I don't understand that move. Uh, they they instated uh, Chris Mazza, um, but I don't get that move right now. But uh, is Brody panicking? Is he just trying any combination? And speaking of combinations, I am of the opinion that they should try different combinations at this point out of the bullpen. Well, let me run an idea about Mazza, because I thought of this on the way, because when I first heard that they had DFA'd Wilmer Font, I, I thought, yeah, sure, that's what Brody does. He makes these decisions, and he should just do the opposite of what he's thinking, because everything he's tried so far has failed. And of all the garbage in that pen, I, I would think Font was the, 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 the one that's... that. Uh, was the least bad, I'll, I'll right. say. So naturally, they DFA'd him. But the more I thought of it, maybe they're grooming Mazza to take a spot in the rotation if they do, in fact, move uh, Wheeler it, no. or Vargas. And Font did not do well as a starter, so maybe they're viewing this as next guy up to the starting rotation. And I saw Anthony Kay's numbers in AAA so far. They're not good, so they probably just don't think he's ready to join the rotation. Yeah, I, I, I think he, yeah, I, I think he needs a little seasoning there. Um, but they they do this all the time, it seems. I mean, uh, they sent Flexen and Pounders, I think it was, down a few weeks ago. Right. And they were, like, for a couple, the last, their last couple of outings, they were the best relief pitchers coming out of there. I don't, and they uh, activated uh, Familia and uh, Wilson. And... I, I get it. Those they sign those guys. They free agent contracts. They're gonna keep those guys yeah. and pitch them. But I mean, I, you know, sometimes you just gotta say, hey, these guys were pitching okay in in this bullpen. That's excellent. Right. And we, you know, we're gonna bring somebody that's gonna struggle. Well, familiar. He's here for another two and a half years. So he's not going anywhere. He signed. To well, unless they can him. move him. You've seen how bad he's pitching. Who'd want him though? But well, you know what? You're right. They can move it. He'll, he'll be great somewhere else. And there's always a pitching coach somewhere that says, look, get that guy. If you can get him cheap, I can fix him. Remember right. Rick Peterson, Rick Peterson right. right? We got the Zamboni. Uh, Zamboni. Zamboni. Zambrano. We got the wrong Zambrano, though. Right. And, uh, but he was going to pick fix him in five minutes. Right. Or 15, or whatever it was. And and he was a complete disaster when he was here. So. Yeah. There are guys, you know, they have egos. They think they can, and sometimes they can. I mean, look at Swarzak. Yeah. Swarzak, the Mets traded him away. In that, I still say, and I'm going to say, until they see something different, the worst trade in Mets history uh, was this trade, bringing Cano here and uh, Edwin. I've got a stiff neck from watching the ball fly <laughs> out of the ballpark, Diaz. Um, here, and uh, people forget we also sent Jay Bruce, who's having a bang up year and killed the Mets. By the way, the Bruce Phillies. had four home runs against the Mets last weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Cano only had four home runs all year. Yeah. Just put that out there. And well, Anthony Swarzak, who, who didn't start off well with the Mariners, we got traded to the Braves and is pitching a below one ERA and his lights out. Of course he is. Um, it's just an amazement to me uh, how the poor the judgment has been on this team in rating players. And I think a lot of it, I, I'm wondering if this guy is just 
bringing back guys that were his age. I mean, that he was an agent for. Let, let, let me ask you this, Gary. You think it's the worst trade in Mets history? I think the worst trade, just because of the magnitude, was Tom Seaver. Just just getting rid of him was yeah, the okay, worst. Yeah, all right, but yeah. in terms of talent, what we gave, gave up to get these guys, this might be on par with the with the uh, Nolan Ryan trade. Yeah, I what think, do you think it is. Well, I'm not ready to call it the worst trade, but all signs do point to it not being a very good trade. Obviously, Cano has been an unmitigated disaster, and I'm not going to kill Diaz as much as you guys are, but. You know, let's let's. Oh, be I'm ready to he, execute. Let, 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 to let, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, he he he's been uh, he he's not what was advertised. I mean, he, but he, I still think that he can rebound and uh, at least salvage. Uh, maybe not this. Well, I, I'll even say this season. Maybe when the pressure is off, I still see his stuff, and I see. That there are times where he where he is dominant, and you guys know that relievers' numbers can get skewed. Oh yeah. That point one or one third of an inning against the Phillies, when he gave up five earned runs, mm -hmm. jumped that ERA up sure. a, a, a run and a half. Now I'm not gonna say something nutty and say he's been good, but uh, I'm not gonna call him an unmitigated disaster either. And I have next to me the report cards that the New York Post gave out and they gave both Diaz and Familia F's and but what they prefaced it is is what by what they said and what they said was that compared to uh, Familia Diaz is Mariano Rivera <laughs> so I guess an F can be anywhere from a 0 to a 59 so yeah, uh, I, I, guess. I guess Familia is the 0 right. and if you want to say Diaz is around a 59 I'll go, I'll, go, I'll go with that. And as far as familiar, he was lights out as an eighth inning guy for the A's last year. He didn't seem to be hurt. And at the time, most of us uh, liked the idea of him coming back as, as the setup man yeah. for Diaz. For him to just implode like this is, is really stunning. I, I, I believe there's something wrong with him. I think he's hurt. And I, I, be. I think it's something that he tried to pitch through, and I, I think it just mushroomed from there, uh, and and now it's now it could be a mental thing. Now, now it's the you know he doesn't have the confidence and everything, and that's what I think is going to happen with Diaz. I think his confidence is shot. Uh, look, he came in one game, and he threw nothing but fastballs. And he got the he, he he went down one two three got the save. Next game he's trying to, to peck on the corners. He's throwing sliders. Why? Just throw the fastball then. Mm -hmm. If your fastball's got movement, they're not going to hit it. Um, you know you were talking about numbers with Diaz, and you know there have been arguments on the social media, and people use the numbers, but. Uh, you know, if you look at some of, I think one of the arguments was, well, he's got 15 saves and all of this kind of blah blah blah. But it's the eye test. If you watch the eye test, yep. if you watch, this is why I say you cannot go totally on analytics. Right. Got, got because if you look at the analytics of Diaz, the season looks bad, but it's not awful, awful. Right. But if you watch the games, it's awful. I mean, he can't. There are games he comes in, you know, if he walks somebody, you know that's the end of the game. You know, you know the next guy up is going to get a hit, and the guy after that's either going to hit it out. You just know it. It's an eye test, and and I, I, I think that's why you cannot use analytics. It has its place, but it should not be the end all and be all. Well, I'm going to use a, a word, an F word, fickle. <laughs> I think... Bullpen's always fickle. We know this. Bullpen's right? fickle, yes. But when you're saying, and, and and if he walks the first guy, you just know. I don't understand why can't they get someone else uh, up in the bullpen to take his place because you know he's not going to do well. Just he, have the guy ready. He's the closer. I oh I know the, the closer. <laughs> I, I I get that, but that's that that's you know everybody thinks the closer is the guy that you know, well if he doesn't have it he doesn't have it. <laughs> and. What remains a mystery to me with Diaz and with just about every closer, 
I don't understand when you put them into a tie game, they're just going to cough it up. And it's it, it's not just Diaz, it, it's every closer. I, I I don't get it, but you put them well, into a tie game at home, yeah. that game is as good as lost. I, so. I, I, don't, I don't get it either, but, you know... I don't know. You know, I, I kind of feel sorry as the season goes on. I feel more sorry for Mickey Callaway than I did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, only because he's in a tough spot here. It's very difficult. Uh, I remember about a month ago, I mentioned on the show, I think it was month, two months ago, that Diaz came to him and said, I need to pitch more. So he pitched him more, and then all of a sudden he got hit. And then he didn't pitch him. And, and, you know, and then, so what do you do if you're the manager? Like, if you pitch him four days in a week in, in maybe one or two meaningless games because he wants to work, and then you don't pitch him because he pitched four games in a row, you need to rest him, and you lose that game, and everybody blames you for doing that. But, they're, you know, they're, they're yelling at you to pitch him in the other games. It's just been a whole mishmash, this whole thing. Now, I would say, I, I haven't looked at the numbers, but watching the games, to me, the offense has been better this year than it has been in the last few years. No no question. No uh, question Chili Davis has done a terrific job with the offense. They're making contact, yet mm -hmm. they still don't score for DeGrom. Go, go figure. But overall, but there's always, you know, that picture. Uh, overall, the offense looks a lot better, and of course... The emergence of Peter Alonzo and Jeff McNeil, yeah. I think, are a big part of that. Uh, by the way, none of them were highly touted when they first got That's signed. Right. That's uh, right. McNeil wasn't even highly touted until he got up to the majors. That's uh, right. Alonzo was, uh, you know, he had a, you know, he could be a major leaguer, but they weren't overly, you know, touting him until he got higher up, double uh, A, maybe even high A, uh, St. Lucie, well, and then he started to emerge right. uh, more as as a potential uh, prospect, big-time prospect. And now he's just had an unbelievable sure. year. He got that reputation, though, of, of not having a was very good defensively, but yes. he debunked yeah. that because he's pretty good. He's you know well, what? He's a hard worker, yeah. and, uh, you know, he's worked he, he takes pride in being an all-around ball sure. player. I think we all agree when, uh, you know, forget about the scouting reports, Keith Hernandez, a 12-time Gold Glove winner, is saying he is he's not that bad. Yeah, he's, he's doing good. an adequate job. Yeah. He's doing fact, a good he job. he might be one of, if not the best defensive player on the team because the Mets' defense is horrible. Oh, the defense and a lot is of the horrible. struggles of the pitching is because of That's the true. defense. Well, this is true I, I don't as know well. how many times you see that pop up into short right field and the first baseman, the second baseman, and the right fielder converge on the ball. I guess the, they're in the Bermuda Triangle. Right. Now, when that happens again, Alonzo should just run. Because, God forbid, he was to be in a collision. And, oh, and God, hurt. yeah. Just let the yeah. ball drop in. Just keep that guy healthy. Yeah. Because the Mets haven't had a guy like that. But if McNeil's in maybe, right maybe field, ever. you don't want him getting hurt either. Well, since you brought that up, and you guys know this because I've mentioned it on other on other podcasts we've done together. The thing I hated the most about that Cano Diaz trade was that it took Neil out of his natural position. And yeah, to I my agree. surprise, he's done great defensively, or, or at least adequate defensively. I shouldn't say yeah. great. The Mets don't have any great defensive players. But he's done an adequate job defensively, regardless of what position he's, he's played. And I think it's time to put an end to that. He should be playing one position. Hopefully, it'll be third base because you know what can they do that they're stuck with Cano yeah. for the time being unless they can move him in a deal That's not and, and take you know, not unless they take a, another bad contract back. Which <laughs> <laughs> I have suggested that uh, they uh, I ran this by Barry. I haven't told you this one yet. Okay. Well, you're gonna like this. But I think now is the time for them to be creative. And I would think something along the lines, it could be multiple different players, but let's, for an example, say the New York Yankees. And the Mets went to the Yankees and say, here's the deal. 
We'll give you Wheeler. We'll give you Syndergaard. We'll give you another prospect. But you must take Cano's contract. Right. And in return, we will take Giancarlo Stanton and his contract. Wow. And that, prospects from the Yankees. And, and Several some prospects lower from level the prospects. That is creative. It's creative, I think, and uh, it fills a lot of voids there. Because if you if they take Cano, you move McNeil to second right, right. now. And you move Stanton to right field when he's healthy, which is his natural position. Yeah. He played with the Marlins. He knows City Field. He likes City Field. He's hit there plenty of time. Yeah. He knows the division. I think he would, uh, uh, I, I, you know, if he's got a, I, I think he would be okay to come here. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, they both have trade clauses. I think no trade clauses, so that would have to be right. worked out. I don't see Cano turning down a trade like no. that to go back to the Yankees. Um, would Stanton take a trade to the Mets? Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. But uh, I, I th- and and this is a deal that could be worked. You know, I mean, you could go to the uh, the Phillies even and say, you know, for Harper, which again, ob- uh, oddly enough, is another right fielder that yeah. they could use. Not that the Phillies would make the deal at all. Right. I don't think at this point. I would never do a deal like that inside the division. Well, I'm just saying though, just for an example, a big contract, yeah, yeah, okay. big contract, you, big contract of teams you could go to. I mean... Uh, and I don't think the Phillies are ready to part ways with Harper. I have no, no, I don't think so years. either. And but uh, You know it, with the Yankees, it, the Wilpons are never going to do that. Well, they were, they I'm were not gonna, so sure. They were going to trade Jay Bruce to the Yankees. Right. They're certainly not going to trade but it's a different Syndicate GM now, so maybe yes. it's maybe he can convince them uh, if he's willing to, to try to do that. I don't know. The, the only it's question, food for thought. The only question I have with that is, and it, you know that is very interesting. But the both the the staff for next year, I mean, you got to think ahead. Who's going to be pitching? The Grom, Max, and then well, who knows? The the whole point though is to try to, you know. Uh, Get rid of some. Get rid of the Deadwood. I mean, I think yeah. Cano would be more Deadwood than Stanton. And by the way, Stanton, I believe, has an opt out at the age of thirty. He does. Yes. So he'll That's turn two, what, thirty in November. Oh, this year. Yeah. Oh. So if he's not happy next year, I think he could probably opt out after the season. Well, he's not even playing this year. He's always hurt. Well, but I'm saying, yeah. you know, um, so you know, he could opt out and then. You know, you got rid of two big contracts, and yeah. you'd have all that money then. Sure. Uh, Plus, the prospects you're getting back, hopefully, a couple of them are going to be pitchers. Right. Plus, yeah. there's yeah. going to be other players and other deals that are going to be unloaded at the deadline. So yeah. that's going to bring Plus, more prospects. And, and you know, Cano is going to kill it over in Yankee Stadium. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's fine. The <laughs> key you know. is the prospects right. and who's who's choosing them. Because right now, do we trust Brody to? The right well, guys. the only thing I will say about that is, from most uh, observers of the minor leagues that I've read, he's gotten very high marks. His team has gotten high marks for the draft. So I, I would have a little confidence in that what they got would be okay. And Alan Baird is in the organization right. now. And he's supposed to be the guru the play development, and uh, and he knows who's in the in the Red, Red Sox, Sox system. Yeah. yeah, and 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 again, if if you got a guy like Stanton here, um, maybe going back to right field, maybe he doesn't get injured as much. You know, I mean, yeah, he's he he always pops up with injuries, but. Uh, you know, not. I don't remember him being out this long with the Marlins. Maybe once with the Marlins, he was out, and yeah, that was after he got, he got hit in the cheese. face. Right, like right. Yeah, that, yeah. Well, that's 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 that. Um, you know, maybe but, playing yeah. left field with the Yankees is it's a different running sure. style. It's a different uh, uh, movement. Um, maybe getting back to right field, he'd be better. I don't know. And you put Conforto in center, and when Cespedes comes back in left field next year. That's a heck of an outfield. Well, you know what, yeah. guys? Offensively, at I, least. I'm glad you brought that up. And with apologies to my wife, because 
He's her favorite player. Ligaris. The Mets have got to get a a regular everyday set. Oh yeah, builder. Juan Lagares yeah. is. Uh, well, what about this talk about putting Ed Marvin Rosario out there? Yeah, that's. That's, that's one it, thing that you consider. It's been I done can, before. I can see that. Didn't uh, Mickey, Robin Yount go out to center field? And Mickey Mantle. And, and Craig Biggio go out to center field? Yeah, but unfortunately, so did one Sam Well. But I'm pumped. Yes, I remember that one well. Well, it's dumb well two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> Not saying that Ahmad was always going to be the guy good. No, no, no attention. But, there, no, but you know, he, you thought he'd be a great he defensive. Uh, you know, I'm it, shocked that he's such a poor defensive. I, I'm shocked job. too after seeing him in, in uh, his when he was younger. Yeah, which contributes that like Brad says to the pitches ERA yeah. because they're not, yeah. they're not they're not errors, but the plays that should have been made. Well, and when did he get this whole double? Clutching and pumping the ball, and the, you feel that you throw it, yeah. not not this uh, tapping the ball thing. I mean, I saw somebody hit a routine ground in his short. He tapped it twice, and the guy beat the throw. And don't we have, or don't the Mets have, a coach on their staff who played ten or maybe even more than ten years in the big leagues as a shortstop? I mean, is he is is, is he working with Rosario at all? Here's a here's a crazy idea. I mean, Reyes is not doing. Give him a coaching job just to coach him. Well, it's That's not a crazy, crazy at all. Idea. Why not give him a coaching job to coach throughout the minors? I mean, oh, yeah. he'd be good with the, the the young Latin kids. They got a sure. lot of Latin kids. Uh, he'd be back with the organization. You know, I mean, would he take it now? Because maybe he's ticked off. But uh, look, Alfonso was there. He's doing a decent job yeah. with the. With Cyclone. the Cyclones, I mean, they run, they bunt a little bit. He's got them playing some good ball. Mm -hmm. um, and wasn't it amazing in that Yankee series to see their pitchers lay down buns? Yeah. And they don't hit in the right. American they don't hit. League. Yeah. Met pitchers can't bunt, well, except for DeGrom. Yeah. Met pitchers can't bunt to save their lives. I don't think the emphasis in spring you remember when spring training they used to watch it on ABC or something they'd have the 11 o'clock news or the 6 o'clock news and they'd show you the first couple of days of spring training the bunting practice, bunting practice. and then when the play, when the other players came in remember the old sliding pads yeah. and the sliding sure. pits sure. and they'd be they don't think they teach that stuff these guys don't know how to slide into well, a base analytics say you know, the bunt is a bad play well, you know what? That's what they. That's I, I, I again, analytics. I don't think they know what the hell they're talking about because common sense tells you, if you put the ball in play, something can happen. Yeah. You cannot tell me a strikeout is as good as 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 uh, 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 any out. It's the same because no, it isn't. If you got a guy on third, he's the tie and run with one out, and you strike out. And versus a fly out or or no. a ball hit in a hole or something that can get him in, it's not the same out. I agree with you. And analysts also say that that stealing is not a good play. <laughs> you know, if you guys got, got, got but, fast, I'm, but I'm encouraged to see that teams are starting to steal again. Mm -hmm. Certainly on the Mets, they do. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> can't hold anybody on. Well, that's another thing. I don't understand why. This is something that I'd be working at in spring training. The first week should be, you know, get these guys loose, get them stretched out, and work constantly on fielding bunts. And, you know, how many times do you still see guys forget to cover first base? You know, I'm going to go a little farther than you on that. I would say, you know, when, when, when players come into the organization in the minor leagues, they should know how to play baseball. They shouldn't be taught how to play baseball. They, they at should the know how to play. League level. Right. right. But in the minor leagues, teach the nuances, the sliding, the base stealing, the bunting, those nuances that change, you know, bring your game up to the level. I don't think they do. I think the whole emphasis on the minors is put on pushing through the top prospects to get them to the major league team. And and you know filling out teams the emphasis even isn't even on winning right because you know uh, and that's why some of these cities yeah some of these cities get ticked off that aren't now the Mets are I mean uh, they own what four of the the teams now or three of them 
Uh, they own Syracuse, they own St. Lucie, and they own Brooklyn. Um, they Bing do not own Kingsport, they do not own Binghamton, no. uh, and they do not own Columbia Fireflies. So they have affiliations with them. Um, and that was one of the reasons they had trouble in Buffalo, because they kept... And and let's face it, that was that is the job of the, the AAA minor league team to provide players mm -hmm. when the big club needs it. But the people in Buffalo, the management at the time, got pissed off because they wanted, you know, they were fighting for a pennant there. And if that's your professional baseball AAA, you want to win, you know. Right. Well, I was speaking of Todd Pratt on my podcast, Baseball and Barbecue, just a tight plug there. <laughs> but he said his daughter... And he's the minor league manager for, in the Marlins system. And he was told, don't worry about winning or losing. Just get the players better. And I think of, of, of one of the purposes, though, of why can't you do both? Why can't you get the players better but emphasize winning or teach them how to win? I, I think that's part of the problem. Some of these guys, Rosario came up, I don't. I don't know if he was on Savannah the year they won, but was I'm going to say no. I'm not sure. Uh, somebody I'm sure will write in and correct me. Um, but you know, you should try to get your top prospects on a winning team. Yeah, let them play together so they see what together. it what it is to win a championship, even if it is the New York Penn League championship. That's a big deal. Those guys celebrate sure. like crazy. And I thought about this um, to, to uh, re-emphasize your point about the understanding and knowing how to play baseball the right way. At the time, I think we all thought that the hiring of Brody was okay because it was a not nice thinking outside the box. Right. So give, right. It, give it a try. Obviously, mm -hmm. Sandy, as you said... How, how exactly how you put it? The game had passed, game it, passed by, it by, okay, which I won't disagree with. So it was time for some a, a fresh face. But the more I think of it, the other finalist, the guy from uh, the Rays with the funny name, Hylum, uh, yeah, uh, Hylum Bloom, yeah, right? Bloom, the Hylum Bloom or Hylum. something. <laughs> Probably again, I wasn't there, nor were you guys. But I, I think about what he might have said to. To, to, to little Jeffy and maybe he just told him what Jeffy didn't want to hear is that your organization is a mess and it has to be rebuilt from the bottom up and uh, as funny as this will sound let's do it the Rays way but the Rays are always a, in the hunt and with a roster that basically looks like a triple A roster if you look at it on yeah. paper but, yeah but they have but, good talent yeah and they, right. come, they, and they come up they know how to play the game the right way, and maybe that's what Bloom was trying to tell right, Jeff, and that's why he didn't get the job, whereas Brody might have just given him a nice con job and said this team is ready to win if he just, we do A, B, and C, and uh, those A, B, and Cs turned out to be pretty much all Fs. Well, let me, let me ask you this, because you make a great point. Klein Bloom would have said, you know, let's start, Rays have a low payroll. They don't spend that much. Well, that's perfect for Jeff. Because <laughs> they don't, they're not, they don't spend. That would be perfect. I don't, I, you know, I, I shouldn't say he does spend. They don't spend correctly, but you know, but uh, the way the way they're doing it, that, that's good I, organization. You know, you look at social media and every, it's all the Wilpons' fault. I, you know, I, I don't know. Like I said, I've been told in the past by somebody who was connected to the Mets, and I'm not going to say who it was. Uh, years ago, and knew the Will Pawns, and and told me that he swears up and down that if Jeff was in total charge of the team, they'd be spending more money. That's all. I, that's I can only go by what he tells me. I told me that. Mm -hmm. um, I it, it's easy to blame the Will Pawns for everything, but as you said, Barry, we all were in favor of the GM choice, thinking outside the box. Oh. All right, it was a mistake, you know. So far, I, anyway. I, I yeah. mean, you have to, uh, you know, and everybody wanted somebody different. They wanted something new, something different, and they did that, and it's not panning out, so it's the Wilpons' fault. Uh, you know, 
I mean, you can blame them, but when people say they don't spend the money, they cheat, they signed Familia. Okay, it's, you know, not a good deal, but they signed probably the worst free agent signing, which makes Jason Bay signing look brilliant, <laughs> is Jed Lowry, who hasn't played an inning for anybody. Right. Any team, I, I think, did he have won at bat for uh, a minor league team on a rehab assignment yeah. and re-hurt himself? Well, you know, you're right. The, the, they, they spend money, they don't spend, spend it correctly. They don't spend it correctly. They don't but spend it correctly. But are they, they're not, but if they say to the GM, build my team, and the GM goes out and signs a Jed Lowry, or signs a Jerry's Familia, right. Or are they telling him sign Jerry's well, it, it Familia? Was un, it was unforeseen to see what's going to happen to Jed Lowry. He played 150 games last year. Who knew he was going to get hurt? But he's 35 he's years 35 old. Years and old. and yes. I don't think too many of us hated that signing. I think there was a better choice out there, which I mentioned okay. the last I mean, time. DJ Mar- 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 well, well, him too. But, <laughs> you know, you put that Yankee uniform on. I know, something and, magical happened. Yeah. But I'm thinking Marlon Gonzalez. Mar- you know, yeah, another Mar- one I would love to have. Yeah. Let yeah. me ask you guys uh, this. Uh, trade deadline's a couple of weeks away. Right. Are you guys thinking they're going to trade Wheeler? Yes. yes. The only p- problem I have with that is they got to replace him with somebody. Now, unless they do a you know, little secret deal on the side like the Yankees did with Chapman uh, a couple of years ago, yeah. go over there, win, come back here, we'll sign him. You know, a little well, I think, I, I, I think he's open to that. Uh-huh. So I, I think that you would pursue something like that. The question is how much you're going to give him how many years. Yeah. Is he really worth giving, let's say, $75 million for five years? No, but I think he'll probably get in the neighborhood of 60. I'd do three for 45. I don't know. But he'll probably turn that down. You know what? I'm not sure I would want it. I mean, how, you know, how many long-term contracts can the Mets have that turn out to be disastrous? And... A year ago at this time, when they were even a little worse than they are now, I was even okay if they had moved to Grom, yeah. moved us yeah. to a contender. We were in Pittsburgh. We said, we'll drive you to drive you there ourselves <laughs> and get back a boatload of prospects. They sure had them, and then they used them to pick up their clothing. If anyone hasn't noticed that the Indians are right there. Oh, they're right there? Right there, in fact, back in the... Race for the walk, or if not winning the AO Central. All right, I think we're going to be just on audio because it looks like the camera stopped. Okay, but we'll just continue on audio. Sure. And and uh, let me get back to my thought about the re this rebuild or you know the, tr- the selling off plays at the deadline. What my question to you guys is, and I agree, you can do a rebuild without tearing it down completely. You know, tearing it down completely means trading anybody and everybody. Well, Alonzo's going nowhere. Right. McNeil's McNeil is going nowhere. nowhere. And now you'd have to say Jake is going nowhere. nowhere. Not with the contract he has. But I would say any anybody else, whether it's at the deadline or in the off season, and as much as we think it's a very creative trade, Gary, Jeff, you know they're not trading with the Yankees. And that's, uh-huh. that's not happening. So the idea of, of standing in the outfield is pure fantasy. As creative and interesting as that, as that trade is. Well, and I ran it by several other people, well, <laughs> and they all said the same thing. They didn't just shoot it down immediately like I thought they might, but they well, all did preface it by saying it's never going to happen because they're not trading with the Yankees. But my point is about the rebuild. The Astros did a rebuild, the Cubs did a rebuild, but they also had hundred lost seasons in there, hitting well, literally said, rock bottom. Well, you said that, though. The, <laughs> but the Mets still, there's, there's still room. They're still ahead of the Marlins. They're not the, there are a few teams in baseball worse than them. Right. But uh, uh, Are you guys willing, or I don't say you guys, but are the fans willing, if they're going to do a complete rebuild, are they willing to endure a couple of hundred lost seasons where they do, in know. fact, hit well, rock bottom? The, the Braves did a, re, uh, a rebuild, and they did it quite quickly, I thought. It's a, they only had a couple of down years. 
Well, the Yankees did one just a couple years in 2016, where yeah. they they yeah. but they took advantage of the Cubs because the Cubs look they didn't win it on well, the Cubs were going for a hundred years. Yeah, yeah and they, and they really they pill, pillaged the uh, their, their farm to got Gleyber Torres. Yeah, yeah. Plus um, plus the fact and they got and got Chapman back. Plus the Yankees. Has some I, look. I hate to say it, and I don't know how they do it, but they had some good scouting. They had yeah, some good plays coming through ooh. Staten Island. Yeah, that that panned out, and like you said, they made that trade, and they they also made a trade with Cleveland that year, right. and they get Clint Frazier from yeah. Cleveland. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, oh, for Andrew Miller. That, right. that's yeah, right. they yeah. had Andrew Miller, but they had the guys to yeah. trade. Right. See. Um, the Mets have to do the same thing. We, that's why I say maybe you have to trade a Syndergaard. I heard a rumor about this. Syndergaard, because the Padres are, are coveting him, for that guy uh, Chris Paddock, who has a, you know, a lot of upside. Maybe him and Alonzo won't get along too well. But, uh, mm. but uh, well, you know, I think you have to have multiple. they got to rebuild that farm. Situation. I like the, Was that the bottom? Moved up a little bit, but now that Alonzo and McNeil are in the majors... It's probably sunk sort of near the bottom again. So yeah, that yeah. Farm they have has some talent, rebuilt. but it's it's uh, well, yeah, maybe in the low years away. It's a couple of years. Well, pitching talent they have. Um, what about David Pierce? It's didn't they, lower. Didn't they sign, didn't they draft him on a number one draft a couple of years ago? David P- Peterson out of Oregon, I think. Um, I know the name. I, I know you mean a lefty out of Oregon. I think they, they drafted him a couple of years ago. Yeah, I think after done. They uh they picked well Dunn yeah Dunn and K were the same year okay right. and then and then K had the he went for Tommy John so right. he missed the next year as Dunn progressed upwards um see I think by twenty twenty one you're gonna have K you're probably gonna have Zapucky uh-huh. another lefty that they're high on um Simeon Woods Richardson is struggling. Um, I don't know who else they got lower. Uh, there's a, a Gonzalez. I can't remember his first name. Who was pitched well this year? I think in Columbia. So they they do have some talent, and they, they have some talent in the lower minors uh, or is Columbia up? Um, there's a couple of guys on. They they have a. a there's a guy on Brooklyn, uh, the first baseman. Gennard, I think his name is Joe Gennard, um, who's uh, Alonzo esque. Uh huh. Really? So uh, he uh, uh, he's hit a couple of long homers already. Uh, big guy. He looks like a good player. So I they, just they I just love the position players on the Mets and compare with the Braves run out there, what the Phillies run out there, what the Nationals run out there. Right now, it's not even close. No, no. What, what, what about trading uh, Dominic Smith? He has some upside well, now. I mean, Dominic Smith's got a lot of upside. And he's done an excellent job at, at, in left field for yeah. this team. Mm-hmm. He's, he's done an excellent job and, and really learned on the fly how to play the game. Yeah. No pun intended there, but uh, he, he's really done a great job. And uh, i got to give him all the kudos in the world. because Look, look, uh, look the teams that are rebuilding. Uh, for one, I think Detroit might need a, a first baseman because Cabrera's getting up there. He'll be just a DH. Maybe there's a, a pitcher or two in their system. I don't well, know their system, but you know there might be a... Maybe even the, the White Sox. Well, the White Sox. Because the White, Abreu's going to be a free agent next year. Maybe they bring in a Smith to play outfield. Um, and Dominic Smith has done an excellent yeah. job this year. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, and from what he started, uh, you know, he was highly talented at the first base. And now we know he's not going to play first base for the Mets. No. And no. with Cespedes coming back next year, you know, he's going <laughs> to... He's going to play. <laughs> You're very optimistic. Well, I don't think if he does, it's for one season. It's, that's what I'm going to say. And it's one season. I don't think I'll believe it when I see it. I don't think we're going to see Cespedes in a Mets uniform again. I'm, I'm even got doubts we're going to see Lowry in a Mets uniform. If, if I was the Mets, I'm going to Lowry. I'm trying to buy out at half price next year's contract because this has just been a total disaster with him, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never heard of a guy missing a whole year with a pulled hamstring or whatever the hell he's got. Yeah. I mean, it started with the knee, then it went to the hamstring. What What is actually and wrong I think with I this heard, guy? I think I heard today 
that all his injuries were on the left side of his body, and something happened that now he's got injuries on the right side of his body. Oh my so god! I, I almost couldn't drive here. I was laughing so oh hard. I heard that on the, on the way here. And getting back to your point on uh, Dom Smith, but you know that done a I'm, nice job. But I still look at him as a first baseman playing left field, and he bring back something. Yeah. I think yeah. Oh yeah. I think maybe so. even a, a center fielder, unless they're gonna. Try Rosie out there, and if they do that, he should be playing winter ball. And you even suggested maybe even sending him out for a month, sending him down for the minor. Sure. Not the craziest, craziest. No, do it now. He only can play it. short for a while. Then a Giorme, you, you got Ruben Tejada, and Ruben Tejada, right? You know. Is it at Syracuse? Bring back right. old Ruben. You know he can play in New York. You know he's a, a decent glove. He can't hit. He never could hit, but. He could he could play shortstop. Yeah, and the Mets have prospects that I have heard of in the minors yeah. that are shortstops. Oh, so there's a lot of them. They have any position where they have depth in the system. It's that's shortstop. The yeah. So what have they got to lose to try Rosie out no, there and not, see if he can play the position? He certainly but again, has the I, speed. What I would it. do at this point in time, I would send him to a team like Brooklyn, while the short season is you know on. Let him play center field there. Bring in Mookie. Well, you know who their their coach is out there in Brooklyn? Alfonso. But the other one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Andy Chavez. Yeah, Andy Chavez. Catch. Yeah, there's a guy. That's yeah, right. that's he true. Catch. That's true. <laughs> He's a good good guy to work with, too. So, all right. Uh, we're going pretty long, so let us uh, let me get to my final couple of points here. Um, Two sad notes coming down. Uh, one was the death of Jim Bouton at 80 years old. Uh, wrote the book Ball 4. Really blew the cover off uh, no pun intended. Uh, of baseball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, with his uh, uh, what would you call it? Locker room uh, yeah. he, uh, you know inside the locker room uh, tome as they say. He the broke- quote I remember was that Bouton was the man that that uncovered the fact that baseball players did not spend all their free time visiting orphanages. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I you remember it being. He but, uh, he started that. Uh, he broke the mold, and if we wouldn't have books like like Bronx Zoo by Spark Live if it wasn't for ball four. That's like, true. That. That's or Ron true. Darling's book. Ron Darling's book. Or Ron book. Darling's book. Which you can listen to Ron Darling on Mets Musings. Uh, <laughs> Um, and the other sad piece of news was that Doc Gooden oh, yeah, was found yeah. to be arrested uh, with cocaine possession in June. Uh, I guess he's out on bail. Uh, that's that's uh, just, just terrible, you know. This a, guy, uh, very I was, sad. I was watching on SNY, you know, the the show, the Good Doctor that they run every so often. And he's going around the schools. I've been clean since such and such day. And since Thursday. Oh, yeah, since Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and now just, I mean, you know, I guess Strawberry was right all those years ago when, uh, you know, he's worried I about that. You know, I guess. It's, it's, he seemed to look better. And you hoped anyway he does that look he better. was, there was a picture. over the hump. But the I other day he ins- was seen yeah. working with kids or something with with pitching and right and, 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 and the all star yeah. the all star yeah. yeah and and then to have this come out you know maybe well I guess it's news maybe they should have just not published something like this and you know uh, I feel bad for the guy though uh, well, he has these demons he just can't he's get rid got of them. demons so and he can't seem to beat them and oh boy what a shame but maybe. Yeah. Being Maybe clean. this time it'll do it. Who for knows? Being clean all those years and that's just you it know. just shows you though it's not easy. It, it's, it's just not. You're always recovering. Right. You're never cured. Right. Um, all right. Any final thoughts on uh, what the Mets should do coming into the trade deadline? Now remember, this year the trade deadline is one day, July thirty first. There is no. Uh, uh, waiver trades anymore. This is a new rule this year. The, whatever happens by July 31st really changes the philosophy of a lot of teams and their thinking now. They have to decide quicker. Are they going to be a player or not a player? Right. Um, 
Any final thoughts on? Uh, well, clearly they they're gonna they should be sellers, and the Wheelers, the Frasers, the Vargases who have expiring con contracts, they should be unloaded and get whatever prospects you can. The other guys, especially Syndergaard, I don't see any rush to to trade him. But if an offer more likely in the off season comes in. Also, right now you'd be trading low on him anyway. But when the season is over, which will probably be another second division finish with wins probably in the you know, mid seventies, some, something like that, then you listen to offers for Syndergaard because to try and sell that, well, you're not going to by then have Wheeler anyway. I mean, unless you uh, resign him, but to try and se- but to try and sell to the fans for a fourth season that the Mets starting pitching is enough to make them serious contenders. I mean, how many times can you fool the fans? It's just it's just not going to work. And then as far as the other guys, you know, Ramos, you know, Diaz, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of teams out there that would take a shot at him I, I, as, the, as their closer. I you think the Red Sox might be interested in Diaz? Sure. Yeah. Well, sure. the I'm thinking, you know, Ramos might be a good fit in Texas because he doesn't have to catch every day. He's going to be DH, and they're, they're in contention. Mm. Uh, they're obviously going to try to trade Wheeler, but you said Frazier and uh, who else? Vargas. Vargas. They're expiring contract. I, I, my fear is the Mets are just going to move him for salary relief, just get him off the books. That They're not going to get much in, in exchange for them anyway, uh, especially because they're, they're free agents next year. Uh, well, hopefully they can get something for Wheeler, you know, play, have a couple of teams play off each other, try to drive up the bidding, just to get that, because you know, Wheeler is, even though his ERA is high, he's one of those pitchers who can really make a game changer for, for a contending team. So hopefully Mets can get something, you know, have other teams bid against each other, Mets get something for, for Wheeler. Even Brody, Lugo, even Lugo, Lugo could too. get something yeah. for. Brody, talk to Houston. Houston wants, uh, I think, Syndergaard. I'm not sure. They're one of the teams that wants Syndergaard. And they've got a good center fielder, a young right. kid, uh, Kyle Tucker, I think it yeah. is. Is he a center fielder? I think. I believe he yeah, is. He's an outfielder. Yeah. Um, supposed to be fast. Five tools. Yeah. I remember him in spring training, but I don't remember. See, I remember seeing him, in, but I honestly don't remember. If he if he's a center fielder, but I kind of thought I, he was a, I, I thought he was a corner guy. I believe that I read he was a center. But maybe fielder, he has played know. center field and he's just kind of blocked by Springer yeah, playing that Springer position there. in the Astro system. So I, I I'm really not sure. But if he is a center fielder, yeah, call Houston, try and work. Yeah, yeah. try and work that 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 and, that would and be. And you were asking a, nice a question deal. about who would be pitching next year then if they traded these guys. Well, you know, then you got to go. To the free agent market and say maybe you know Garrett Cole's going to be a free agent, right? The best free agent, the best, one of the best pitchers on the free agent market next uh, year, Zach Wheeler. <laughs> Dylan Betances is going to be a free agent next right. year. You know, wouldn't you like to see him in the eighth inning? Yeah, or even the ninth inning. Um, that's what they're going to have to do. I think there is a core here. I believe that they can build around. The problem is they added too much, too much of this dead wood, and I, I don't think the chemistry is there. It looks like do they get along? Yes, every team gets along, but they just—I don't know if there's a chemistry with everybody together. Um, the pieces just don't fit. That's yeah, what it is. I, I mean, if you look you gotta at make the pieces fit. If you look at Alonzo and McNeil and and uh, even Smith. And Nito, you know, they all night. They all came up. They played at one point in the minors. There's a, there's a certain looks like a certain chemistry there. Uh, even with Conforto, you throw into that mix, and Nimmo, Nimmo being out with the injury, we don't know what's going to happen with him. Um, but when you when you look at these other guys that came in, they, they just they don't seem to fit. It's just it, it's not a good fit. It's it's not a. Uh, Diaz doesn't seem like a fit. Cano definitely doesn't Cano seem like a he's fit. He's disinterested, whatever. He's not even... Um, and I think that's what they have to look for. More youth, more... Kalanick sure would have been nice in that outfit, yeah. wouldn't it? 
and done on the mound. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, but they screwed up that deal. So, uh, you know. And uh, I guess that's it. I guess we had our say. And I want to thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you. And thank you, Gary. Glad, glad you're back. Yep. Thank you. I mean, we missed you. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> And uh, thank you all for listening out there. And don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe button and and subscribe to the podcast on uh, YouTube, Google Play, iTunes, wherever you listen to or watch the podcast. I'm sorry, there's no. We started with video, but I think the battery went dead, and uh, I've had this trouble a lot. <laughs> But we'll see what we can salvage. Maybe we can add some stills in or something. I like the Mets the bullpen. Yeah, <laughs> like the Mets bullpen. It failed in the clutch at the last. Uh, we were starting out good, and then at the, the last innings, the bullpen went and lost the game. But thanks for listening. And uh, until next time, I'm going to say it. I don't know. It's very difficult. But <laughs> keep the faith. Stay optimistic. And let's go Mets. See you next time on another edition of Mets Musings.